Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about your medium-sized comic companies. You know, your IDW, your Boom, your Dark Horse, all of these medium-sized companies and how we can use them to change the course of the major companies of DC and Marvel. How we can try to get them to move away from this SJW nonsense that they're pumping out in many instances, especially in Marvel. And I use the word use quite specifically because we would have to use them to do this. The small, no, not small, but medium-sized companies. And my mind works in weird ways because what I, what made me originally think about this is dollar boxes, you know, where you can, those boxes in your comics shop where you can get comics for a dollar. Now, I've been buying comics like that for a long time, probably longer than some of you listening have been alive. I've been buying comics like that since early 80s, late 70s. I've been buying comics like that, and they weren't always called dollar boxes, you know. Uh, when I originally found these things, they were probably a dime or a quarter, and then they went up to 50 cents. But a long time ago, I had, even before there were comic shops, you know, I had a list of probably four, maybe five used bookstores in my local town that I would just frequent because they would have a stack of comics in the back and they would be for, you know, a quarter. And it started out the way that they were and the quality that they were was that most of the comics there were just things that were used and abused, you know, chewed on by a dog. That's the kind of kind of quality that you'd get out of them. But the ones that actually you know, had covers and were half decent. Most of them were independent comic companies, you know, and I would include also in that, you know, things like Archie and Richie Rich and stuff like that. They're kind of independent. We'll, we'll lump them in with the independent medium sized companies. They would be part of the medium sized ones, but that's what they mostly would be. You'd probably get like 75% of what they would be would be from medium sized companies. Back then, they were probably more small than medium, but compared to Marvel and DC, we'll call them medium at that time. You know, and you'd have maybe 15% DC in there and about 10% Marvel. That's what they were. Most of them were dog-eared and just used. But after comic shops started coming around, and comic shops had been here for a while, and they couldn't put all of their stock into the room that they had, then dollar boxes started appearing again. And again, they were made up of about 75% of these small to medium-sized companies, about 15% DC, and about 10% Marvel. And these small companies, you know, this would be long and ever ago where we're talking about things like Modern Comics or Carlton Comics or Red Circle things like that, you know, and even the things that were being shoved in there for Marvel and DC, certainly the Marvel stuff, it was their non-continuity comics, the ones that were not in their main continuity. You'd get things like uh, G.I. Joe and Transformers or New Universe, which is an 80s imprint, basically, that Marvel tried to put out, which failed. These are the kinds of things you would find in the dollar boxes. And I had a really good handle on what was there in the dollar boxes because I'm that guy. I'm the kind of guy, and I'm that guy who would go through every last comic in the dollar boxes. Usually there'd be like five long boxes. That's what they would have for their dollar comics. And you get, what, somewhere around 300 to 330 comics in a, in a long box. And I would sit there for an hour, maybe two, go through every comic in the long box to find something good, to see what was there. You know, I'm that guy who stands in the middle of the aisle for an hour looking through long box of every comic. And, you know, a lot of uh, comic store 
employees don't like me because I do that. I remember this guy, oh, I was on a trip one time with my parents and uh, we found this comic shop in a mall and he had five long boxes, I think it was five or six, if I remember, and full of comics that were $1. And he had a little sign above it saying, take a look, see what's in here. You might be surprised what you'd find. And I'm sure what he did was he took like 20 good comics and he shoved them in randomly, thinking that someone would just look in there and they would buy some dollar comics. And every once in a while, someone might get one of the good ones. But no, I stood there for at least an hour, probably two. I went through every last comic in those five or six six long boxes and I picked out every last good comic and you should have seen this guy's face when I came up with every last good comic in those boxes he was not impressed with me at all but that's why I had a good handle I still I remember remember what used to be in those one dollar boxes and when I started to get back into comics last year I went back to those places. I went back to used bookstores and I went back to my one dollar boxes to see what was there and I was shocked to find that it had changed almost completely the opposite of what it used to be. You still find about 15% DC in there, but 75% of what is in these boxes now, certainly in my comic shops, is Marvel. And you probably get about 10% of the medium small companies that's in these boxes. Now, I'm not talking things that are really old either. I'll, I'll give you an idea because I'm I'm right now spending usually at least $25 a week just on dollar comics out of these dollar boxes. And over the last, let's say about a month, what have I gotten? I've gotten numbers 1 through 100 of the Ultimate X-Men. And after I finish Ultimate X-Men, I'm going to move on to Ultimate Fantastic Four and then Ultimate Avengers and then Ultimate Spider-Man because they're all in there. All of them. Complete runs. And there's also New 52 stuff. There's also DC Rebirth stuff. You know, and there's a lot of other smaller things in there as well. But there's also stuff in there which I will not buy because I know better than not to buy. But those would include the entire fake Thor run. You know, Jane Foster's Thor that just ended a couple of months ago, right up until her death. They're all in there. And the Unstoppable Wasp is in there. I'm not buying that, but it's in there. And just last week, I bought an X-Men Blue and a Hunt for Wolverine that I bet were not even three weeks old. So... These are the books that are going into the $1 boxes right now. And this is showing me because, again, DC is about the same. It's about 15% DC in there. And the Marvel stuff is about 75% of these boxes. But the independent stuff is what really gets me because it used to be about 75% independent, medium-sized comic company stuff that's in there that used to be in there. But now there's only about 10% of that stuff. And still, I'm including stuff like Rich, Rich, and Archie still in these boxes for independent. You're not finding a whole lot of independent stuff in there more, in there anymore. You know, I, I bought some Pathfinder. I got like maybe half a dozen, maybe uh, a couple of Shadow, but not a lot. Now, you could probably find a way to rationalize why they wouldn't be in there because, well, the comic shops would order a lot more of the Marvel and DC and figure that they would sell. And I think a part of this is the ridiculous idea of these five or six different covers and they're buying these things, expecting people to buy them off of their shelves and they're not. That could be it. And it could be the fact that they're not ordering a lot of stuff from IDW and they're not ordering a lot of stuff from Boom or from Dark Horse. Or, uh, it could be. It could be, but that doesn't change the fact that they're doing better business in these medium-sized comic companies. They're doing better business. This, These $1 boxes are a really good indication of who's doing good business and who isn't. And Marvel is really not doing good business. And these medium-sized companies are doing good business. Even though they still have a lot of SJW nonsense going on in them as well. 
But the point is this, and I said it in one of my other videos, I think it was, can uh, Comics Gate be good for both the right and the left? I was talking about the fact that it used to be that your dollar bill was your vote in these companies. You would vote with your dollar bill. You would say, I want this, and I want this in some way also means I don't want that. And that's what you would do. You would vote with your dollar bill. But it doesn't work that way anymore for Marvel and DC because they've been gobbled up by these giant companies. Marvel is now Disney's Marvel. And that's how I'll probably refer to it until it changes from what it is to something better. It's Disney's Marvel. It's not Marvel anymore. It's Disney's Marvel. And DC is a Time Warner company. You know, so... They don't care about your dollar bill anymore because Disney is the one that owns their company and they can draw their money from a dozen different other places, a hundred different other places to supplement whatever it is that they're doing with Marvel. They really don't care if it loses money if it's part of their entire plan, whatever their plan might be. So your money is not a vote anymore. But for these medium companies, medium-sized companies, your dollar is still a vote because they can go out of business. And I really am looking at these medium-sized companies and saying they're feeling the pinch right now because they thought they could run with the big boys and do exactly like Marvel and DC did. And they started putting all of this SJW nonsense into their comics as well, just like Marvel did, just like DC did for a little, not for all its titles, but it's still there. And they thought that they could do that without really bringing to mind the fact that, hey, if this fails, we could go out of business. And they're probably feeling the pinch of that right now. And that's how, that's the key for us of how we can use these companies. Because you do have independent people producing comics, and that's great. But we also now have really professional people producing independent comics. We got Ethan Van Skyver. We got John Malin. We got people like this who have worked in comics and really bring a professional sheen to their comics that they are producing. And they are making stuff that's make that's making money, that's going for a month and making $300,000. So these people that are doing this, like your Kelsey Shannon, like your John Malin, like your Ethan Van Skyver, they're getting a lot of blowback. And the reason why they're getting a lot of blowback is because they're making people afraid. That's what they're doing. This SJW nonsense, if you look at it really deeply psychologically, you know, it comes from resentment. That's their, their entire worldview comes from a, a place of resentment. And what does resentment do when, it's a, when it gets to be afraid? What does a resentful person do when they're afraid? Well, they lash out. They get angry. That's what they do. So the anger that's being directed at these people, like Ethan Van Skyver especially, but the others as well, that anger is an indication that these people are afraid. And these medium-sized people, medium-sized companies, they're afraid I would say that's an indication of they're afraid because it's not working out for them like they thought it would work out. This SJW nonsense is not working out for them. And it's really starting to pinch them. And they can go out of business. They can go bankrupt. They're not they're not Disney's Marvel. They're not DC being owned by Time Warner. They are small and they can go out of business. And this fear, this anger, is an indication of their fear. Their fear is most probably coming from the fact that things are falling apart for them. And we have to use that fear on their part and turn one of these companies. Because if we can get one of these companies to do an about-face, one of these medium-sized companies, an IDW, a Boom, Dark Horse, any of the other ones, that have embraced this SJW nonsense, if we can get them to turn straight around, that will be a definite moment that I would say would turn one of the larger companies around as well. 
You see this all the time happening with countries even. Uh, I could give you examples of it happening right now in the world on the international scale with, with countries because uh, that's kind of my bailiwick. You know, my what I've studied the most would be the pol- politics, but I won't get into that. But you have these people. If you have a medium-sized company and they do a C-turn and they turn right around away from this SJW nonsense and they start doing what they need to do to make money again, start listening to their customers, start producing a good product. If they are almost going to go out of business and they know that they have to turn right around away from this in order to stay alive and they do it, then people are going to start buying those books. They're really going to shoot right up with sales because I had bought and I had gotten uh, what was one of the first books that I had picked up after I got back into comics was Fighting American, right? It was because someone, I think it was, I love comics. He had talked about it as the new Captain America. And I didn't want to buy Marvel's Captain America, but I still want Captain America. So if someone could give me Captain America from another company that was basically the same character as Captain America, I would buy it. But Fighting American wasn't. Eh, it was okay, but it certainly wasn't a new Captain America. But if someone was to take something like, let's say, oh, Red Circle's The Shield, which was their version of Captain America, and really turn him into a new Captain America in an independent company in its own universe of superheroes, because I'm a superhero guy, I would buy that. And I think a lot of other people would too. And if you get one of these medium-sized companies who doesn't have a giant pot of money to draw from, start out selling Marvel, that is going to be the death of SJW Marvel. That's the death keel right there. Because it's going to take the sheen off of Marvel because the people making movies are going to start looking at the trends of where people buy comics and what the characters are and they're going to look at them and just say hey look maybe we should make some of those independent comic movie independent comic heroes into movies instead of concentrating on Marvel why should we do that why don't we go and use these other characters over here they seem to be selling really well Let's do that. And when that starts competing with Marvel's cinematic universe, even if they don't really do all that well, these other movies, if they would come out, still, it's going to impact what Disney really is doing with Marvel because their moneymaker is the movies. And just because our dollar bills don't mean anything anymore as a vote, the dollar bills of entire audiences, that that would mean something. So, I really like the idea of move the needle. Move the needle. You know, I don't post a lot of stuff there because, well, again, I buy out of dollar boxes. I buy older things. I try to support my local comic shop by buying a lot of back stock. Every once in a while, I buy something new, and I do post it. But I think we need to really concentrate, certainly for Move the Needle and for other, I don't know what you call it, avenues that we have open to us to impact the comic industry, is to focus on these medium-sized companies. Because we really, all we really need is for one of them to turn right around, away from this craziness. And if it does that and just starts producing really good comics with really good art and really good stories, then I'm going to eat it up. And I know that a lot of other people are going to as well. And that's going to make these bigger companies take notice. And it's going to be the impact that we need. So, basically my rant is all about how we should be using Move the Needle and how we should be using uh, Comicsgate and how we should be using our complaints. Focus on these medium companies. Don't give them a pass. Don't say, well, they're just, they're not going to be around for very long or, well, they're not Marvel or DC. Don't give them a pass. Grind them. 
make sure that they feel the pain. Make sure that they know when their books are selling with Move the Needle. Make sure that they know when their books are trash. Because I think too many people, especially in YouTube and and looking at comics and things like that, they don't give these companies as much attention as they should. They're still focused on the two big companies. And, you know, maybe your videos aren't going to do as well if you do a lot of medium-sized IDW comics or Boom comics or things like that. But you should put some more out there just because if they're good, we need people to buy them. And if they're bad, we need people to know that. And we need to impact their sales because they will be the ones that turn the big two around. All right. Well, that's my rant for today. Hopefully, I give you something new to think about. If I did, hit like, hit subscribe, share the video with someone else. That'd be really great if you could share the video with someone else. You know, like it on your Twitter feed. It seems to actually put the my viewers up a lot when people do that, so I really appreciate anybody who does that. And I'll hopefully have another video really soon. This one took a little bit too long to get out there, but I got it and I'm, I'm working on other ones. And hopefully, as I said, you can share my ideas with other people and you can share your ideas with me in the comments. That would be great as well. I'll see you later. Bye.